Ladies and gentlemen, it is the Awesome Cast. We are here at Smokey's Tavern in Millville, PA. How you guys doing out there? Woo! There's people out there. Holy crap. We're on the internet. We're in a bar. It's amazing. Is this Studio S? This is Studio S for Smokey's, our, our new remote location for the Awesome Cast. What is the Awesome Cast? It's something that keeps the music going way too long. That's one thing. Turn that off. This is this is the podcast where we get geeky talk tech with the people that are using him here using them here in Pittsburgh. We're going to have a lot of fun here. I'm Mike Sorg, at Sorgatron on the Twitter. Please follow me there in a whole bunch of places. Of course, Awesome, awesome Cast on the Twitter. I am a video producer and podcaster from my studio bar here in Smokey's Tavern today. Uh, with me, of course, is John Chichilla. He is a gadget guru with Big, Back, Big Bank International Incorporated yes. LLC. 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 Thank a little you. closer there. Get a little, love, oh, the mic. love the mic. Love the mic. Love the mic. I love the mic. There you go. How you doing, Chilla? How you doing? Man, not too bad. How are we? Oh, oh. that was the wrong button. <laughs> Hello. That Wake up. Here. Pretty good. Uh, you know, it's a little different on a Friday night. Oh it's, yeah. It's not Tuesday. Yeah, it's not Tuesday. And also with us back in the show, we got the only way we can get Doug on the show is to bring him to a bar with microphones. <laughs> Douglas Durda of ShouldIDrinkThat.com. Another ten-year-plus uh, podcaster here tonight. Uh, how you doing, Doug? I'm doing well. Thanks for having me. Hold on. We're, we're making sure we see what the mics are doing. Hello. Hey, hey now, you can now hear it's me. sexy. Uh, how you doing, Doug? I'm doing well. I, I'm very much at home in a bar, so <laughs> I appreciate this. That's good. That's good. You're my you're my guide. You you guys, I, <laughs> I'm the guide. You, you're my guides. Uh, of course, Awesome Cast. You can check us out awesomecast.net. We do this live every Tuesday night. Sometimes at a bar on Fridays, apparently. Uh, Live.awesomecast.net. You can join us uh, live in the chat. Like Tragar, who's actually joining us here live in the bar right now, which is pretty freaking awesome. Uh, so, and uh, you can also follow us and, and uh, follow Patreon. Patreon.com/slash Awesome cast. Uh, share it with your friends. Subscribe to it on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, and video, video versions on YouTube and the Facebook. We're going live there a bit uh, as well. So this is the Pod Crawl on International Podcast Day. I think we need to talk about that a little bit right off the bat here, guys. Um, it, it's it's podcasting in the bar. You guys, you guys are more are more frequenters of bar as far as I think than I am. Uh, how how is the night going for you? We're the only ones with kids. <laughs> And we're at is a that, bar. Is that the secret? We're at a bar. This is great. And it's not for like happy hour too. Yeah, where are the kids? I don't know. <laughs> uh, duct tape, duct tape, and a and a small chain to the to the crib works well. Uh, but I mean, this is great. A great event by uh, Rivers Edge, who's like literally their studio is right across the street and down a little bit here in Millville, PA. Some really awesome stuff happening. And of course, this International Podcast Day. It it's, went international. It went international. It's like what? It's third Who year. Thought? We we actually had one of the guys that created it on the show like like way back in the day when they first got started, and now it's it's a it's a movement. It's a podcast movement, if you will. And and you are the trendsetter. Uh, who, who me? Yes. <laughs> I don't know. Does about this mean podcasting's back? <laughs> who who in here? So how many people here listen to podcasts? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And uh, and 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 so. Uh, it's really cool. You know, we get out here, we get to see, uh, you know, do this in out in public, not in our, our basements, in our in our dining rooms, and in, in, in our or Chilla, you got your own like like compound there in your house <laughs> where you can tell Siri to turn the lights on, and I can shut the door. And you can shut the door, of course. <laughs> yes, of course. Uh, so but can Siri bring you a beer? Siri can not yet. Not, not yet. yet. Not yet. I'm sure it's coming. <laughs> I'm absolutely sure it's coming. So uh, that's why we have kids. <laughs> we like to start the show with uh, everybody's awesome thing of the week. So I think this is uh, the, the the awesome thing of the night, and hopefully a little bit of uh, uh, here and there, a little bit of a bar theme, I think, uh, as well, given our guests and our location tonight. Uh, well, first of all, I, hey, my awesome things on International Podcast Day, of course. That is pretty awesome. I mean, it's that awesome that, that 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 you know. I, I didn't think ten years later we would still be talking about podcasts uh and so many podcasters represented here so many not represented here as well it's, it's really cool 
Uh, like that, that, there's that many. Um, seeing new names on the, the we just started a, a Pittsburgh podcasters uh, Facebook group the other day, mm -hmm. just to see who all is out there. See if we can get some some of them uh, working, you know, uh, coming out of the woodwork there. It was up to about 35 people too, which surprised me because we it only kind of really knew quick. of the people that go to PodCamp, right? PodCampPittsburgh.com. <laughs> and what what amazed me though is the amount of people saying we've got all these different types of shows and we're looking at each other. Going, I had no idea that these shows were going on in Pittsburgh. And exactly. I think they had the same feeling, too. Like, wow, there's other podcasters in Pittsburgh. You know, some people in this town don't know about us, Doug. Well, you're in my world now. We're in a bar. <laughs> they, they must live in the Outside of a bar, yeah, good luck for me. <laughs> yeah, come to a wrestling show with me, buddy. Uh, it's a little different. Uh, right, Tragar? Um, hey, beer people need to drink. That's right. And wrestling people, too. Yeah. That's right. It, it comes together eventually. <laughs> comes together eventually, right? What? No, we didn't, we're not getting into that bit. Uh, so No chops up here. Uh, Doug, what is your awesome thing of the night? My awesome thing of the night. Is that paper? Pardon me? Is that paper? Yes, yeah, this yeah. is hard copy, just in case. Doug Durder and Frank Mergy, they're two people that bring paper on this show. There you go. Do you have a BlackBerry? I used to. Actually, I still have a BlackBerry at home. I don't use it, though. R. I R. just R. found man. it. R. I do have a BlackBerry, yes. Anyways, what's your awesome thing of the week? Is that NPR? It is NPR, too. Wow. Okay. So a big problem over in Europe, especially over in the German area, it's, it's very historic over there. Streets are very small. They're not made for the big trucks that are right, going right. through. Right, I've seen the Italian job. Are they for Exactly. Yeah, you know what? That, that's what I think of. I think of Italian job. Right, right. <laughs> Sorry to say it, but that, that's what a lot of people think of when they... They think of the, the tight roads, and I've been over in, in Sweden, and it, they really are that, that tight. So if you have to get a big truck through, especially if they're carrying beer, which is very important to the livelihood over there, I, it can get a little tight, and traffic can get backed up. We run into problems. Well, one of the breweries came up with a solution, a very high-tech solution that would most likely make American brewers cringe at the thought of it, but they're doing it over there. They've actually built a pipe. That's going to carry the beer from the brewery to the bottling center. They built a beer pipeline? A beer pipeline. <laughs> that is sanitary. That was the big thing. They're going to have to put like, armed guards on that thing. It's going to be like the big gulp machine at 7-Eleven. People are going to want to put their head under the spouts. So at first, they thought they were going to get kicked back because of the fact that they're going to have to dig up the roads. And much like Pittsburgh, we don't like it when you dig up our roads, especially in Dormont. Not too happy about the tracks and beach view either, but or they take out our trees, or they burn and, down and our they, bridges. They, ca they catch our bridges on fire. Yeah. Yes, our, and yeah. bridges catch on fire. Liberty Bridge is dead to me. So when this was proposed, the people that would be along the route actually got really excited about it and asked if they could donate money to buy part of the line, like have their name on it. So <laughs> there are different wait. tiers. Did they do like an Indiegogo for this thing? <laughs> I don't know if they have Indiegogo or Kickstarter or how that go how that worked me? over there. Go it, it's underground. Do they get like a little bag? Is it on Go that Beer Me? Of pipe? Go oh Go Beer Me. I like go that. Go Beer Me. Yeah, fund my fund my brewery. Now the only question was, would they be able to get spouts or faucets or spigots, depending on where you're from, at their houses or at the restaurants? And that was a no because there are sanitary reasons they can't do that. But this is a solid pipeline to have beer. Over 1,000 gallons an hour go from the brewery over to the bottling line. And then from the bottling line, it goes out all over the world. The brewery is over 500 years old. And, yeah, this is just this is incredible to see something like this because they're not ruining any of the architecture, any of the – they're not disturbing anything mm -hmm. in the area. They're keeping it as pristine as they can, uninterrupted. Besides, you know, they have to pick up the bricks to go under the road, but nothing's being removed. And they did this within four months. Wow. I, I think we need to hire them. If it was in Pittsburgh, it would probably take about four years. Bring them in. Bring them in, certainly. So yes, that is, that is my cool thing. Uh, there will be links to it, I'm sure. Oh, yeah. Um, we'll, off we'll of shouldidrinkthat.com and also off of AwesomeCast. From the AwesomeCast group, yeah. We'll, 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 we'll talk about this a little bit. So That's the, awesome. The brewery is the De Have Man Brewery. That's great. So, uh, uh, Chilla, your awesome thing. Um, I know you are in possession of a fireball-inducing uh, 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 smartphone yes. recently. So, so, and you have a little bit more to go with that. Yeah, so... the. I, I got to give it to Samsung, and actually on Tuesday I'll bring I'll bring the box. It was actually it it was too big of a box to bring with me today, but with the Samsung issue with phones catching fire, they actually sent me 
two boxes. A small box with a brand new phone, pristine condition, new cables, new everything. And then this other much, much bigger box, which I was like, what? Someone actually brought it to me at work and I'm like, why is there a second box? I open the box and there's another box within the box. Is this like one of those like creepy German uh, uh, person inside the person? <laughs> it was not things. a person inside no. the person, but I got to give it to him. So you open this box up and the box opens. There's white, there's white felt, which makes me question, is it, is it asbestos? What's, what's, what's it made of? But you open the box, it's all coated on the inside hey, for shipping. What's a little asbestos when your phone might blow up and, and spill acid in your face, okay? Maybe on your hand. I don't think it's going to, like, squirt in your face. But so, so you open it up, there's another box to put the phone in. Okay. inside. The, actually, so it is a box within a box within a box. So there's another box to put the phone in, and then they give you plastic gloves, a plastic bag. <laughs> the whole box around it has has like paperwork for to make sure it's allowed to be shipped. It has stickers saying it's a fire hazard. So I got to give it to Samsung. They re- they really actually did it right. I, I hear their wa- washers are exploding now, <laughs> but. Did you, know, you get an instant hazmat suit to go with this thing? <laughs> I did not. I just I just got the plastic bag, plastic just the, gloves. Just a hazmat shoot, a suit that says Samsung a- across the front of it would be amazing, right? <laughs> that you can wash in the exploding right. washers. Right, right. I'd like Kristen, Kristen Bell and, and her husband to come and pack it up for me. They look like the guy from Back to the Future. <laughs> yeah, the guy from Back Watching. to the Future. There you go, there you go. Dax Shepard, yes, thank you. <laughs> what? Dax Shepard, her husband. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> wow. Watch the Back to the Future references. That is my holy grail. <laughs> I, 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 you also have a gadget here today. So, so you, I did, you're, I did. you're a traveler. you got to take care of all your gadgets. And, uh, you know, some of us here, we got... You know, we have trouble. We have too much stuff. We have too much iPhones and everything. Uh, it's GE, not Samsung. It's GE. It's so, GE, so, so it's not going to so explode. So I actually brought one of these. So I, I'm, I'm big on packing stuff with me to take to work. You know, I'm worried about stuff scratching up screens in my bag. So I actually I got this surge protector. And we've talked about surge protectors on the phone before before or on the on the show before right but um this one actually has three ports so i can plug three different things into it two usb ports on the bottom and what i really like about it is that the actual plug collapses back into the device so i don't have to worry about when i when i pack it with me i I can fold it up in there i don't have to worry about scratching the, the the samsung devices different screens on different uh cameras i mean it's it's compact it's easy to take with me. Yeah, I have something similar. It has like the three plugs and the two the two USBs. And yeah, it, it, it kind of sticks out. I, I worry about that a little bit myself when I'm packing for trips. I have actually have it in my bag right now. <laughs> it comes with me everywhere. It's the Belkin one that was going around a bit. We have a question. We have a question? I need to wear that shirt. What shirt? Oh, we uh, this shirt. this. If you're on the video version, <laughs> Chil- Chilla, we're looking Chilla has... The camera, so- a uh, sweet, uh, we're we'll, we'll, we'll actually cl- been closed in on it, uh, right there. Uh, so, so move your hand so they can see it on the video. You got a, uh, uh, you got the whole Iron Man ensemble here going on. So, hmm? oh, 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 yeah, yeah, we, it's voice response. I'm like, why is she telling me that we're doing a podcast? This is like the, you know, where, where'd you get this? He is Iron Man. <laughs> I, so she says. She I, says know, her, I know a person like that. Me. <laughs> she says her, um, her brother thinks she's he's so much Stark. Yeah, uh, Chilla. When I first met Chilla, I remember. I remember like like he, he walked in and I was like, "Is that the Verizon guy?" And now he's like completely adopted this Tony Stark thing. It's a, he, like your your transformation over the years has been tremendous. I remember that at Jekyll and Hyde. Yeah, Jekyll and Hyde. And we're just like, "Is that the Verizon guy? Is he here?" Now he's a sprint guy, yeah, I guess. But yeah, that's true. Guy. Sprint guy. So, so actually, you can pick this up at Wizard World. Um, it's a Comic Con, uh, and it will be in Pittsburgh in November. And I th- will probably be there. It's got to be online somewhere. Yeah. And you got um, the full like 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 the the hoodie and everything. Is that like like does it like zip up with the Iron Man face too? Nah, no? no, just full on. Right, stops right there. Mm. There you go. He's hoodie Iron Man. Actually, go. Carla got this for me. My, my wife. She she actually feeds my tech addiction pretty nicely. Oh, now that is a great wife. Okay. All right. <laughs> All right. That's awesome. So uh, there you go. Uh, so uh, from there, 
got the gadgets out of the way. Uh, we got a couple more things to, to talk so, about just here. Just real quick, yeah. back to back to International Podcast. International Day. Podcast Day. So, so outside of our own, what's what's your favorite podcast to listen to? Oh, he putting me on the spot. I'm putting you on the spot. I think all the rest of the podcasters left, so I think I'm safe. <laughs> Uh, so I don't have to say you jag off now. Uh, that was a very nice podcast. Jeez, uh, <laughs> favorite. I'm going. Doug, you go first. Me go first. Uh, let's see, the Barbecue Central show, which Ooh. is based out of Cleveland, Ohio. Ooh. I listen to that every week. First, I watch him on the live stream, which is on for two hours every Tuesday night. And he's also on. Greg Rempe is also on. Um, the outdoor cooking channel.com so I get to watch a stream there I'll have that chromecasted and then on my tablet I've got the chat room which has there's like 18 or 25 of us depending on the day and then I'll listen to it the following day in case I missed anything because so, I'm big into barbecue now yes uh, yins love barbecue.com yins love bbq.com yins love, it, yins love bbq.com I'm a fan of brevity that's good. That's good. And it makes it easier when I have Twitter handles and stuff like that. But yes, it is Yin's Love Barbecue. So, so I'd say I, I, I'm going to give two answers because I, I mean, my favorite to listen to is the one that I've been listening to and the one that got me into podcasting, and that's This Week in Tech, because it's like the de facto. And even like like the main host left this week. Little reports like off in like it, Italy or something, and they had like a bunch of like like Jason Calacanis and a bunch of other guys on there. And it was like a great different conversation. I love it's always changing. Uh, so I mean that it's it's the one that it's because of that show that I started talking about pro wrestling on a podcast and here we are, right? Like 10 years ago. Uh, so and and so and I want to give like kind of a local one cuz I feel like I overlooked like the local guys a, a bit too. But one that I got to listen to, like guys that I think are doing some really good funny stuff and just are having fun, and I have to listen to them every week as our friends at uh, uh, Does This Hold Up who've been on the show before. I mean, those guys, those guys are getting on there, and they're just making like off the cuff. Like they're not, they're not like comedians, but they're just guys bsing about movies and a lot of other stuff. And it reminds me of the good old days of Wrestling Mayhem show, where like sometimes we kind of got to the pro wrestling, but we kind of talked about whatever, like the weird experience at McDonald's down the street, and then the. Uh, the calls to the manager that wasn't really the manager that's really weird and and, and, and you know that kind of stuff like like it, it's it, it it it's a little piece of inside of what, what we what we started getting into so life before responsibilities <laughs> when it comes to podcasting yeah you know well, and they're doing long distance pod- podcasting they're, they're doing now, yeah. they are definitely doing that um uh, the zencaster which has been interesting and that also helped me on with a couple of my clients too lately so i definitely recommend that if uh for people wanting to uh, get a little bit better audio on their on their podcast, if you have to do it like cross country or anything like that, so 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 I should have scripted that because you stole my does Which this one? hold up really <laughs> yes I, I actually really enjoy that on the way to and from work does the song That's, does the song get stuck in your head even though you yes, don't know the words all the time dun, 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 dun. it's and, catchy and it, it it brings back so many younger memories because one of the things they do it's does this hold up it's it's movie reviews but the movies have to be ten years or older. So, you, like this, I think the last one was Sixteen Candles. Uh, Sixteen. The, I just listened to the day Adventures in Babysitting, and I haven't watched oh, that back in forever. I haven't heard that one yet. <laughs> yes. I just came up today. I didn't listen to Sixteen Candles yet, uh, but uh, Adventures in Babysitting is on Netflix. The bet that that that, that is getting watched very soon. Um, I uh, I might have to. Uh, yeah, they uh, they they did a scene. They did a, a series where they were doing Vin Diesel movies. Um, what, what was it? Get get dieseled or something like that? Was there a hashtag? <laughs> He's gonna come to Pittsburgh and kick their. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I gave him like the worst Vin Diesel. It was like 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 man standing down or something like that. Where you it know, can't what, be any worse than the pacifier. The pacifier. <laughs> oh, they did the pacifier. Yeah, they did. They did all those. Um, but anyways, yeah, no, no, they're a great ones. So, so, do you have a second choice? <laughs> What's your second favorite? Under My second favorite after that is, is actually I tune into Mac Break Weekly mm-hmm. and uh, Windows Weekly every week. It's on the Twit Network. Of course, it, it's huge for me for work. Just to just to tune in, hear what's going on in the industry. Make sure I catch up on on things I missed. Um, it, it, that's that's a big one. For I've me. been catching up today in, in the spirit of international podcast day. Our friend Chris Brogan uh, started Pittsburgh uh, or started Pod Camp up in Boston. Uh, but he's got some good stuff about business and business mind and all that kind of stuff. Um, and just like some other wrestling ones, like Chris Jericho's podcast because he had a Brooklyn brawler and that's just fun. Um, so, 
All right. Uh, hey, I want to hit on a couple of these tech things. Uh, we got a few more minutes here, I think. Um, um, tell me. So first of all, we're at a bar. I think it's, it's, it is a, a, a right that we talk about beer apps. What is the latest and greatest in beer apps these days, Doug? I love Untapped. <laughs> untapped, and, that, and, that, and that's without the e. It's, so it's u n t a p p d dot com. I'm a fan of badges and getting hey, re- rewarded for drinking. What are you doing over there? We're doing a podcast. Doing a live oh, show up? on the internet. What's How's up? We're live on doing? the internet. Right. Welcome to the Which internet. One? There's several. All yes, right here. we're all over the place. Where are we at? We're all, everywhere. <laughs> Everywhere. That works. Did you hear that? All right, so he's got Archer on. Oh, yeah, I see that? Did you hear? Last season's coming up. Oh, no. It was just announced today. Nah. Yeah. Last season's Why coming up. Why would they do that? It's the funniest fucking show that ever lived. One of their animators is from Pittsburgh, too. Nah. Yep, yep. Mm-hmm. Whoa, whoa, what's the last season? Was it? Uh, it was this afternoon. They broke it that this was, they announced that this is going to be last up, season. Dude. I'm dead serious, dude. Everything's going away. Everything's going away. Archer's the Archer got Emmys, bro. <laughs> bro. What? Archer got Emmys. You're right. Um, All right. Uh, yeah. Hey, Doug, tell us about Untapped. So or, Untapped no. is a great, is a really cool app if you want to start logging everything that you drink. Like not even drink. necessarily. Yeah. Not even if you Is want somebody, to. Hey, where's the camera? At? This guy's got a great You're good, shirt. man. You're good, so man. Not, not only if you want to just log what you're drinking, but it also uh, you can make a little competition between you and your friends. Right. Because so we need guys, competition in drinking. Well, yeah, absolutely you do. It's but always a competition. I actually had a competition going with another guy. Don't know who he is, but we were going back and forth on who could drink the most golden monkeys. Mm-hmm. How'd that work and, out? Uh, I got up to 300, and Victory actually said, wow, that, that's impressive. And then this guy came back and had another 100 within the next month, so I'm thinking that he's fluffing the numbers a little. I'm not going to accuse him. I'm just saying it might be happening. Uh, but what's really cool, too, is it will, because of these badges, it will get people to go out to try new beers because you know that you're too away from, like, this Belgian beer or this American lager or whatever it is. It gets people motivated to go out and try new things. So, I mean, that's, that's always a plus. And if you go to places like for Craft Beer Week in Pittsburgh, what you'll do is you'll get a badge if you go to, like, three different venues – during that week. So it's getting you out to also experience the community and and try more beers. And it, it, it's kind of like the Foursquare for drinking. Yes, so it is a four. In. Yes, that's exactly what it you is. You get stickers and everything. Mm-hmm. I was just talking with comedian Matt Light about, like, he's like, why does everybody check in on Facebook all the time? I was like, dude, I check on Swarm where I get stickers. Because stickers! It helps. Um, I love stickers. Uh, tell me about... Uh, uh, so so, so which, I, I tagged Elixir. You got Elixir. That's so, yours. Yeah, that, that's mine. So I'm not I'm not a huge beer drinker. I like my vodka mm-hmm. with a little splash of Coke. Mm-hmm. Um, so Elixir is for us non-beer drinkers. And it actually... It's a social network. You can, you can just slide right through everyone who's drinking. They have pictures of all of the different drinks. And then you can kind of post on there. I would urge you to friend me, Chilla. I, I joined. He's Chilla everywhere. I'm Chilla everywhere, and Chilla was still open, which, nice. which blew my mind. Really? So nice. yeah, Chilla was. St- There's not a lot of people, I think, on Elixir. <laughs> so I'm trying to throw him a bone because I need so someone to that drink work? Is it, that's it, not is doing it, beer. Right. <laughs> <laughs> is it? Is it? Um, like like so? Is it like? It's just like drinks, like like with their. It's, it's being, pretty much any drinks, but it's it, you can put recipes on there based it, on like like hey they make a really good so and so here at Smokies or something yes. right like you can say this bar like like has a really good mix yeah like this, the peach of, of this version like the peach like there you go there you go uh, so have you tried the peach abuka I have not tried the peach I think we should all do peach abukas that'll be our own is that a name. shot is that I, a I have no idea what that'll that be is. our own six four nine <laughs> that'll be great. Six four nine is that good? Yeah, that's right. I'll make I'll make sure I'm not saying six one nine. That's the wrestlers thing. Uh, so I lost my notes here. There we go. Uh, lastly, I think I mean we'll probably talk about this. Uh, we should probably get our friends on soon. Uh, anybody read the trib? I guess not. I guess not on a paper? lot. Yeah, on paper. <laughs> <laughs> on paper. Not anymore. I have friends. No. I have friends. I have friends that work at the trib. So uh, less and less well, of them these days. But uh, I'm a fan of the writing. I don't get the I, ha, I don't get the print though. I have no reason to get the print. And apparently they've noticed because it's going away at the end of November. <laughs> well, but yeah. I, okay, I'll get print if I need to use it for something here. Yeah, yeah, just for a podcast or yeah, that makes sense. But, uh, but I, it, it was really inexpensive though to get the paper. I mean, 
it was something crazy, like seven, not even seven dollars a month. Like really? The Sunday paper. Oh, some, I didn't know that. Not wow. the Sunday, but like they had packages for like seven dollars a month. Mm-hmm. They were considerably cheaper than the Post Gazette, which is why we went to them. Yeah. And I liked the stories a lot better too. They, they seem to pop up a bit more, and of course they've been doing uh, digital stuff. Uh, a friend of other shows on the network, Justin Labar, uh, we just did something with yesterday. With um, um, he's he's uh, he does a lot of radio stuff on it. Like they have online radio, not podcasting necessarily, but but just like online streaming radio. Uh, and it's been it seems like it's been fairly significant. You know, kind of kind of doing the sports side. So it's interesting to see them do that. But they are doubling down apparently on like the outer regions. You know, like out in Westmoreland yeah. County and everything like that. Which makes sense, though, too. Oh, absolutely. So, really, really, I, I, it, it, it's the most forward thinking thing I've heard of from a newspaper uh, in several years, uh, other than them doing their, their digital, like trip digital stuff. Uh, so, it'd be really interesting. So, I think we're going to have to, I don't know if we're allowed to get our, because most of our friends are at the Post Gazette, I think. So, <laughs> so we'll see how that friends, goes. I have a lot of friends at the Post Gazette, a yeah, lot of beer yeah. and, uh, and food and drink writers there. Well, we'll get everybody that but, used to work for the Post Gazette uh, on the show and let's see what they think about that. So, all right. Anything else you want to touch on before we get out of here and we go see what your Jagoff is doing down the road? Are we checking on uh, Archer? Oh, Archer. Archer's season, ending after season 10. Season 10 of Archer. Something else just said they're on the last season, too. Just real quick, make sure you check us out Tuesday. Tuesday. Uh, I, think, I, think, I think Google has a little announcement coming up. Google's got an announcement. I just bought a Chromecast because I forgot mine at home for this event, and now they're going to have a new Chromecast next week. You can still return it. I, I, I probably could. I'm not going to do that to Best Buy. Can I return um, my uh, my Google Chromecast audio disc thing man, that I you, bought like a year or two ago? Did you ever get any use out of that? I did. Okay. I, it's really good if I want to listen to music on our one stereo while I have my phone with me. I got that one thing hooked up. You know, Okay. And, because my intention was going to be to plug that into the mixer so I could start streaming stuff from my phone to the mixer while I'm doing a show. But there's not enough power in that little thing. So so I only have one HD TV. You guys have seen the studio. I got a lot of old two TVs, right? Right. And, I, and up in the studio, I still have, like, the one first-generation Roku that somebody gave me. It kind of still runs the Twit app and Netflix and Hulu, right? And Amazon Video. But it's slow and everything like that. So I'm like, I wish I could just get one of those sticks, but it'll plug into an old TV. It's a nice 27-inch, you know, fine for the little office I have and everything. Right. I, I just can't get the functionality on it for something new. Roku just opened. It's a new, it's not a stick necessarily. It sits in front of your TV, but it has a composite cable that comes out of it as an option. It's like 40 bucks. It's uh, it's on their site right now. They have like an addition that comes. It, it's actually $10 more to get the older connection than just HDMI. Wow. So uh, so if anybody's got tube TVs out there that they want to get bring to the century, uh, the Roku's got a solution for you. So uh, I think that's really awesome. That should have been my awesome thing of the week. It should have been. That yeah. is pretty awesome. Yeah. There's, there's always, what, four days There's from always now. Tuesday. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us. Pod Crawl here at Smokey's Tavern in Millville, PA. A really awesome, awesome event. You can uh, follow us. We're awesomecast.net, awesomecast on the Twitter, the Facebook, and, of course, uh, subscribe to us on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, uh, YouTube, Facebook for the video versions, all kinds of places wherever fine podcasts are downloaded. And, uh, and we'll see you guys next time. Time. Thank you. You guys have been our awesome audience. You guys have an awesome week. Woo! Woo! This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.